Every car audio system can benefit from the addition of a subwoofer. Regardless of what type of music you listen to, from classical to rap to rock, it all has low frequency information. So it's critical that we have a subwoofer that can reproduce the sound for the full listening experience. Now, on this channel in the past, we've focused on building our own custom subwoofer enclosures using a standalone component subwoofer. But obviously this requires a lot of tools, time, and effort. What if you were looking for a more simple solution? Well, in today's video, I wanna focus on the best process for picking a preloaded subwoofer enclosure for our vehicle. What is a preloaded enclosure? Essentially a box and subwoofer that are already combined and for sale as a package from the manufacturer. Now, there are other options out there like a powered enclosure which then adds an amplifier that's also built into the subwoofer enclosure. But in this video I want to focus on just that preloaded subwoofer enclosure application as I do think it's advantageous to have the ability to pick a separate amp. So not only will we be talking about how to pick that preloaded enclosure, but also how to pick a matching amplifier. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's get started. So to get the process started, we need to collect some information and measure the depth, width, and height available in the space that we plan to use in the vehicle. For a single cab truck, this is usually going to be behind the seat. For an extended cab truck, it's either going to be behind the back seat or underneath the rear seat, or potentially even in that center console area if you have the space. In a car, whether it's a sedan or a coupe, you're usually looking at using the trunk area. And then in an SUV or a van, you're going to be looking at using the cargo area. Now, when you're taking those depth, width, and height measurements, you're going to want to consider how much room you're actually willing to use. Generally speaking, we can use the rhyme that more space equals more base. But obviously using more space for your base means that you have less space for your groceries or other cargo. So this is personal preference, something that you need to consider. So take those three different generic measurements, write them down and have them available once you start doing your research. With that bit of information, we can start narrowing down our options. Let's hop on over to the computer. So for the selection process here, I like to use Crutchfield. Crutchfield sells many of the different top subwoofer brands, so we have a lot of options to choose from. They also have a US-based technical support team, so if we have any questions or if we need any help with matching to something like an amplifier, there's a ton of people that are available to help. Full disclosure, they are a sponsor of the channel, but I've used them for many, many years, long before YouTube even existed, and I've always had a great experience. That's why I'm recommending them to you guys. If you guys wanna learn more, you can take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link on screen or down in the video description. So we have some different options on the side here that we can pick from in order to start narrowing down what enclosure is best for our application, and I recommend that you start at determining your enclosure type. A ported enclosure generally has more efficient base performance but at the expense of being a larger size. A sealed enclosure is generally described as being more musically accurate and having a tighter base performance and oftentimes allows for a smaller size. And finally a passive radiator is a bit more unique. These have a second non-powered driver if you will. In my experience this allows for an enclosure to play a bit deeper but at the expense of being just as large as an enclosure that could hold two sub for our sake, to go through the exercise of narrowing down an enclosure, I'm going to go with the sealed options. Now let's talk about subwoofer size. I think that most people's next impulse would be to determine the size of subwoofer that they want to use. But I would actually recommend against that. The reason being is I think a lot of people oftentimes get too hung up on the size of the subwoofer. One might think, okay, I know that I want a lot of bass, so I should get the largest subwoofer that I possibly can. But in reality, I feel what's more important is getting an enclosure that is sized properly for your application. It's kind of a myth that small subwoofers can't play deep bass. They can, and it oftentimes just depends on the design of the subwoofer and the enclosure that it's in. So instead of focusing on the size of the subwoofer, I recommend that we focus on what we determine as being one of our most restrictive dimensions that we measured earlier. This is going to change based on vehicle type, but it allows us to narrow down far more options on what's going to be best for our application. So again, for our sake of narrowing down some enclosures, let's say that I measured my width to be a 25 inch dimension. So I want it to be you know, underneath that amount of width. 
So I'm gonna pick that there, and now we've narrowed down to a ton of solid enclosures that we can use for this application. The next factor that I'd recommend we focus on here is the max RMS power. So all these enclosures are obviously loaded enclosures where they have a subwoofer built in, so we're going to be able to determine an enclosure that's going to match what we're using for our system wattage. I really like the power values that Crutchfield has broken everything out into here because I think it does a good job of categorizing the amount of performance that you can expect from that power level. So let me give you my opinion on what each of these power levels is. Now, a quick side note here, remember that we're talking in watts RMS values. So that's constant power that's going to the subwoofers. You'll notice that all these companies here, they all have a power rating in watts RMS, which is that continuous power rating. That's what we wanna look for and that's what we wanna see. So anything under 200 watts is going to be a very minor base upgrade. You're going to be able to hear the difference between having the bass completely on and completely off, but overall, it's a very minor addition of bass. Now for that 200 to 499 value, that's what I see as being the common simple bass upgrade level. You are definitely going to notice the subwoofer. You're even going to be able to start to jam out a little bit, but it's not gonna be anything crazy. For that 500 to 749 category, that's where I do start to categorize it as you're starting to rock out quite a bit. And anything above that is going to be your substantial base category. You may think to yourself, I definitely want to be in that substantial base category, but the thing to remember is once you do get into that category, you do need to do a larger wiring size, and you also, depending on the vehicle, may need to do some additional electrical upgrades to the vehicle. So remember, as you go up in each of these categories, obviously your amplifier budget is also going to need to go up but once you get into that high end, you also might need that additional budget for the electrical. Again, I find this 200 to 499 category to be pretty common, so just for the sake of our choosing, let's pick that one. So we've now narrowed down our selection to eight different loaded subwoofer enclosures. This is where I recommend that you really start clicking each of these different options now that we've narrowed it down quite a bit. And on each of these pages, we're going to want to go to the details and we're gonna to wanna to take a look at the overall dimensions and make sure that those are gonna work for our application. This is also where you might want to consider the overall shape of the enclosure. In my application, let's say that I'm looking for a wedge style enclosure, you can see that most most of these are a rectangular prism. The only one that's a wedge is this one. So for the sake of our conversation, let's say that we've went through all the details and we're happy with this enclosure here. This is what we wanna go with, this JL Audio 12 inch TW3 enclosure. The next thing we need to do is pick an amplifier for it. So what we wanna look for is the power handling. So in this case, this is important, they have a range of power rating that we can use for this enclosure on the amplifier power. So we're looking from anywhere of 125 watts up to 400 watts RMS. Now the reason that I point out that this is a range is don't get hard set on the idea that you have to use whatever that largest value is in the range. The reason I mentioned that it's important to not get too hung up on using this full value is because of the way that the math works when it comes to loudness. There's this perceived idea that, well, if I only use 200 watts RMS and the subwoofer is capable of 400 watts RMS, I'm only going to be half as loud as the possible full output potential, but that's not the case. The way the math works out is for every doubling of our power, it really only gives us an increase of about three dB. So as an example, if we were to use this subwoofer at 200 watts and measure it, and then if we were to use it at 400 watts and measure it, the difference in those values would only be about three dB, which seems like a lot, but for human hearing to have the perceived value of actually doubling in loudness, it usually takes about 10 dB. So it can seem like if you're only using this subwoofer at 200 watts that you're leaving a ton of performance on the table, but that's not actually the case. If you are super concerned about getting every last bit of performance out of the subwoofer, by all means, look for an amplifier that has a 400 watts RMS value, but my point here is it's not as big a deal as a lot of people think it is. Knowing this information is also going to make your amplifier search a lot more simple because 400 watt amplifier just aren't really a very common thing, whereas 
300 watt or even 250 watt amplifiers are quite common. The other really important detail we want to pay attention to for our loaded subwoofer enclosure is the impedance. In this case, you can see that we have a 2 ohm and it says total impedance, even though it's only the one subwoofer. If you were using a preloaded enclosure that had two subwoofers, make sure that you're paying attention to that total impedance value because that's what's actually going to be the impedance load at the amplifier connection. So when we're shopping for our amplifier, Amplifiers, we're going to want to make sure that we pick something that does this power rating within a 2 ohm load. So here on Crutchfield, we've gone to the mono amplifier section, and what we can do is let's just narrow down the power rating right away. This is a good, well, let's pick these two here. That way, in case there is a 400 watt amplifier that will show up for us as well. And let's change our minimum impedance on bridge to 2 ohm so that we can find something that has that nice 2 ohm rating. And now we can start looking through these amplifiers. So 250 watts RMS at 2 ohms. This one here is too powerful. I think we're going to end up with a lot that are too powerful. Let's get rid of that power range. Here we go. This narrows it down a bit better to 16 different options. So we have an audio control version here, 300 watts RMS at 2 ohms several different 300 watt RMS at 2 ohms. There's a couple of 250s in here. And here's another JL audio amplifier that I know from personal experience is a great match for that 12 TW3. So in our case, we could pick this one. There are a ton of other things that go into picking an amplifier. So if you guys want to see my full video that I did here on the channel that goes into the do's and don'ts of picking an amplifier, definitely be sure to check that out. So those are my thoughts on choosing a preloaded enclosure, but I want to hear from you guys. What else do you have to add? We're all a community here helping each other out at Car Audio Fabrication. So if you are new, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Don't forget, next time you are picking out a car audio system for your vehicle, you can rely on helpful assistance from our show sponsor, Crutchfield. You can learn more about them and get a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link on screen or down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Jerry, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. And as always, my friends, thank you guys for tuning in and watching.